Good afternoon. I'm Lawrence Singleton, Dean of the Lubin School of Business. And I'd like to welcome you to this Dean's Roundtable. Really pleased to have with us as our guest today, Ann Dennison, who's Executive Vice President and Chief Financial Officer at NASDAQ. Ann Dennison earned her BBA in Public Accounting from the Lubin School of Business, Pleasantville Campus in 1988, and an MBA from the Lubin School of Business, White Plains Campus that we had back then in 1992. Ms. Dennison is NASDAQ's new Chief Financial Officer. Her selection for the position was announced this past November, and she formally started her role in March of this year. She is responsible for all areas of finance and real estate. With more than 20 years of experience in corporate finance, financial reporting and analysis, and leads a global team responsible for corporate finance, including controllers, tax, advisory, treasury planning and analysis, investor relations, ESG reporting, procurement, real estate facilities and securities. She's got a big portfolio of responsibilities. She joined NASDAQ in 2015 as a senior vice president, controller and chief accounting officer. Prior to NASDAQ, she served at Goldman Sachs as managing director and as head of financial reporting where she was responsible for internal and external firm-wide reporting and financial planning and analysis. She wore many hats, including service on many of the firm's uh, senior committees. Prior to Goldman Sachs, she was with Price Waterhouse, one of the predecessor firms of PwC. Ms. Dennison is a very successful alumna, alumna of the Lubin School of Business. Please join me in welcoming Ann Dennison. Ann? Thank you, Dean Singleton. I am honored to be here today and uh, look forward to hopefully having an interactive chat. I, I wanna make one correction and this is for vanity, um, maybe a little bit. Uh, I earned my BBA, so I did a combined program, BBA, MBA um, together and both in 1992, just for, so just, right. to give, just to shave four years off my, my age, maybe, I'm, but um, in all seriousness. So I'm honored to be here. I see a couple of familiar faces and um, look forward to, 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 uh, to chatting. I thought maybe what I would do is just tell you a little bit about um, my, you know, my experience at Pace. Um, and I remember it well, even though it was kind of a long time ago. Um, and then sort of how, um, how that kind of, you know, launched me into the career that I have today. And uh, that is, you know, 100% uh, the case. And so, um, I won't, I won't go too much into my high school career, but I, I happened to go to high school um, in White Plains, an all-girls Catholic high school in White Plains that was on the, um, at the time, the White Plains uh, Pace campus. So um, I think the undergrad uh, was there, and then there was the grad program, which was in sort of like the um, the you know business area of White Plains, and so I, I um, never, you know, I went to my, my high school every day. I never thought much about, you know, um, about college until I needed to, and and you know I kind of knew Pace was there on the um, on the campus, but um, I didn't you know I didn't pay much attention to it. So as I went through the college process, um, you know I was not sure what I wanted to do. I had you know sort of started um, come you know before college thinking I'm going to be I want to be a detective or in the FBI, um, and then you know at some point I want to be a tax lawyer. I'm really kind of glad, kind of glad, you know, I see how hard they work. So I'm kind of glad now that, uh, that I went in a different direction. Um, and then ultimately, as I went through the, the college process, I, um, there was a, uh, you know, an opportunity for a scholarship um, that was associated with the high school that was the all girls Catholic high school. And because we were on the same campus. And um, so I was fortunate enough to be the recipient of it. And, um, and and excited to, to go to Pace. And I lived, you know, I grew up in the lower Westchester area, not too far from Pace, but I really wanted to go away. Like, and, uh, you know, no offense to my parents, but I really wanted that experience of being like out of the home. And so I ended up, I did live on the White Plains um, campus, you know, from, from my freshman year. And so um, I started out at Pace as an economics major. And I'm not sure, you know, I, you know, fully appreciated what, what that meant. And I, I did, you know, conceptually like it, but I, you know, as part of that, I took my first accounting course and, you know, me, you know I don't know, it sounds so new corny, but the, the stars aligned and it, it sort of really fit my personality and kind of, you know, the things uh, that I like. And so um, 
I ended up, you know, pretty quickly after joining um, or starting, uh, changing my major to accounting. And I had, you know, I'd say, um, you know, a couple of sort of great early on experiences, you know, with, you know, the professors um, and, you know, challenging me um, that really sort of solidified it me for, for me. I had uh, applied to a few other programs, you know, thinking I wanted to be a lawyer. And um, I decided, you know, once I was kind of like six months into Pace that I uh, was going to stay. And I and I had a really great, you know, experience through my four years. Um, I think, you know, reflecting on why I ended up where I did and sort of how I progressed, you know, one of the things that um, was really sort of like helped me develop as a person and really sort of, you know, start to think about my, you know, forward career was doing sort of internships as part of, you know, as part of my college years. And so I did a number of them, you know, and, and at, at, in my senior year, I, I did one at IP, IBM in the tax department. And I still actually have, you know, con, you know contacts and, and relationships from, you know, that internship um, way, way a, a long time ago. And so um, that sort of put me on the path of, you know, uh, as you know, along with my major, um, to, to wanting to join one of the, the big, uh, it was the big six at the time that I left college back in 1992. And so I, you know, through the um, career development program, I'm not sure if that's the official name, um, was given the opportunity to do interviews with all of the, you know, accounting firms that, you know, uh, wanted to, to do an interview with me. Um, and then got my opportunity. I started my career at Price Waterhouse before it became Price Waterhouse Coopers. And um, as Dean Singleton described, I kind of, you know, made my way through my finance career to to the position that I have now. And so, what I'll say is, I just wanna, I'd rather hear from you guys on your questions and stuff. So I'll stop talking, and, and I'm sick of hearing myself talk um, for most of the day. Uh, I, I will just say that. So yesterday, I think it was yesterday. It's like a swirl in my head. Um, I'm new to this role, the CFO role. I, I started on March 1st and yesterday was my first um, earnings call. And so I feel like I've hit, you know, I hit the milestone and I can breathe. So I'm really glad this, you know, this session is today and not like the day before yesterday when I, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't even be able to think. So I'm going to stop there and just, I'll just take questions. I'm happy to share, share anything or you know, talk about anything that you guys want to talk about. Yeah, so I have a question. So why did you end up leaving Goldman Sachs? If you want to talk about that, obviously. Yeah, sure. So it's absolutely. Um, I had a wonderful career at Goldman Sachs. I, I was there for um, just about 19 years and I was within the finance group um, all the time. I'm, I am, you know, I am an accountant. I'm kind of a geeky sort of technical person as well. But, but um, I kind of, I grew there, you know, and had the ability to sort of go to different groups and to see different things. And I really did think that I was going to stay there for the rest of my career. I had no intention of ever leaving. Um, I was working in a role within, you know, supporting the asset management division. And um, I got a call from, you know, the controller of Goldman Sachs saying, she really wanted me to come and work in on the corporate side. I had done that role earlier on in my career and, I didn't, I didn't really want to do it. Like I knew what it was and it wasn't something I wanted to do. Um, and so I declined and maybe about two months later, she called me again and asked me again. And, and usually, you know, for the most part, um, you know, when your company's asking you to do something twice, um, it's not a, not much of a question the second time. And so I did feel obligated to take the role and that's kind of what set me on the path. So I took the role, um, and I, I said to myself, I'm going to give this role three years. I want to give them three years. I'll give myself three years to see. And then I'm going to decide at the end of that whether this is what I want to do or, you know. And I'm so grateful for that having happened because had that not happened, I probably would still be there. Um, and, not, you know, and not that that would be a bad thing, but I think it's always good to challenge yourself to go, you know, to do more, to do something that you haven't done before. And so... The three years came, I, I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't in the right mindset. I started the process of looking and, you know, I, I had a very, very defined view of what I wanted to do. I didn't end up doing any of those things and I ended up at NASDAQ and it's probably the best thing that happened to me in my career. And I've 
been here, you know, five and a half years. I've grown so much as a, you know, as a person and also as a professional. So. Thank you. Good for you. You look great and you're smiling. So obviously yeah. you did something right. So good for you. Thank, Thank you. you. I had a question as well. Sorry, I couldn't turn my camera on. Um, I had some trouble with logging in, but um, I had a question about, um, so a lot of people say that like accounting is like a lot of people are not happy doing accounting. What um, makes you really happy with it? And what do you recommend for people before entering that field? So it's, um, it's funny that you asked the question because my, so I have a daughter who's graduating um, high school this year and you know she's going off to college next year and yeah you know, I've you know obviously as her mother um, you know we spend a lot of time together and um, uh, so I, I bet I have you know I have four kids so this, I think she's the one that's most likely so she, apparently she checked the accounting box you know go as she's going into college and um, she's you know she's got a lot of her friends, you know, and they, and they don't know much in my opinion, because they're telling her that's boring, you know, why are you going to do that? And, and they have her questioning it. And so I've been, you know, talking and I'm not trying to push her to do anything. I think she's got to like figure it out and, and have the experiences. But what I, you know, what I, what I said is, you know, to, accounting is not boring. Um, accounting is the basis for, you know, for everything. And it's sort of, you know, a, a way, you know, sort of like, the basis for you to solve problems. And so when I think about, you know, if you think about accounting as just ticking the boxes and, you know, doing some of the stuff that maybe you need to do to sort of just hone your skills early on, um, that, you know, that maybe can, can be boring. But if you think about what is the opportunity for you to learn and to learn about sort of the baseline for all of the, you know, financial statements and for everything really that happens in the company, I tell my finance team all the time, without us, you know, they, we, they can't survive, they can't do, they can't pay their bills, they can't fund their projects. And so we have to remember that. And it's, you know, and s someone asked me, it may have been my, I forget who it was, maybe, maybe my husband, I don't know why we do so much talking about accounting, but this was pretty recent, he asked me, um, you know, what, what is the most important quality, you know, you're looking for? And, and you know, I think sort of overall, and, and, and this gets honed over time, it's really about having good judgment. And so being able to understand, you know, the numbers or the situation and having good judgment. And I think the, you know, the skills that you get from, you know, in the accounting profession and the finance profession, really understanding things helps you hone in on that judgment and understand the implications of the decisions you're making, which, you know, affect, every, affect everything, every company. Um, you know, has, has that sort of dynamic. So hopefully, hopefully that, uh, that was what you're, you were looking for in terms of, you know, um, your question. Another question I had is like, what do you see as the future of accounting? I know that like, there's a lot of mistrust in like the big businesses and in thing, you know, like the Equifax leak, they had the privacy leak. They recently, uh, gave some, um, like, they they owed whatever is owed back to some of the people that got scammed on which is really bad um so i in terms of that like what do you see moving forward like in terms of new laws and just like the practice itself and how it kind of is viewed sure i i actually think there's there's a lot of trust in the accounting profession and you know um when you know when whether it's an audit comp, you know, an audit committee of a company or someone, you know, going to invest either in a public company or if, you know, for instance, NASDAQ um, is going to, you know, invest in a company or purchase a company, the first thing that I want to know is who are their auditors and what, what do their audit opinions look like? And I, I do think, you know, there, there's always, you know, going to be those one-off situations, but I think broadly speaking, you know, uh, the, the trust that exists, you know, for the big four and the accounting profession in general is what makes it possible for us to transact, you know, am among different companies and to feel good about it. And when you think about, you know, China in particular, you know, one of, so, and the SEC, you know, has uh, addre addressed some of this and, and there's, you know, there's some things coming down the, the pipe in terms of things going effective, but, you know, we've seen a couple, right, we've seen some Chinese companies that um, have, you know, not succeeded, or there's been, um, 
uh, fraud or, or you know different situations um, within the companies themselves. And what you know, uh, I guess for those particular instances, what we've seen is you know not a reputable accounting firm you know doing the work to um, to validate those books and records. So I think the accounting firms are you know critical to to trust and success in the in the markets and um, at, at the company level. I, I think what's coming down the pipe is you know expanded responsibilities for the accounting firm. So there's you know I'm sure you guys are hearing about ESG. It's the topic of the day. Um, there are all sorts of reporting frameworks and there's you know there's you know we're more they're more mature in Europe you know we're less mature here there's lots of folks that are looking for ESG data whether it's investors you know regulators and we're going to see more and more of that over time in my view become you know part of the rules and part of um, things that companies are going to need to do on a regular basis and I believe you know in addition to all the the validation that the accounting firms do now that that's you know going to be part of the sort of expanded view of how we evaluate companies and the accounting firms are going to, you know, have a role in, in validating that somehow so that we know, you know, when we look at a sustainability number for one company and we look at another, that they mean the same, you know, that they mean the same thing. And so that will, you know, happen over time. And um, I think it'll, you know, become more and more important to us. Um, I did have some questions that came in with the RSVPs. Um, let's see, what is a pro and con about your position? Well, that's a good, that's a good, I'm not, I don't think I've ever been asked that question before. So on the pro side, I think it's easy. Um, I, you know, I am, I'm challenged every day, you know, one of the things, and so I love, I love, you know, I'm only, I'm only, so how many, I'm a, um, a month and 22 days in. So I love everything about my job. So that's the pro because it's brand new and it's just exciting and coming at me. Um, and I'm, you know, so, so the con is there's, there's a few things that as part of this job that I need to do that are sort of outside of my comfort zone. And um, one, of the, one of those things is, you know, speaking um, to, in, you know, to investors and, and to analysts in, in public, you know, in a public forum where you could be quoted and, um, you know, you could say the wrong thing, you know, so I'm an accountant, right? I like to get it right. It's really important to me. I know all the facts, right? And so, for, for, you know, it's, it's a con, but it's something that I also think is an opportunity. So I'm working on, you know, developing that part of my skill set. And, uh, but it's a bit daunting, so. We do have a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, the first one, could you possibly discuss what exactly pushed you away from going into the FBI? That is a certain place that the student would want to be in for their future. So it would be great to know of the challenges that they experience. Sure, so I don't know, I mean, I, I only know from TV about their challenges. I can only guess, but I, I will say, um, you know, if I, if I have, when I get the downtime, I like to watch, you know, there's a show called the FBI. There, there's a lot of uh, cool shows. So I still have a lot of interest in it. Um, you know, re reflecting back on why I didn't pursue that. Um, it, when, you know, so I start, I started my career at Price Waterhouse and, you know, it, um, I, I enjoyed making money. Um, I enjoyed my life, you know, living in New York City with my friends. And, and I think so, it was a bit of, you know, I was happy and not wanting to disrupt, uh, disrupt what I had sort of created for myself. So I think it's an amazing career. And I actually do have a friend that left Pricewaterhouse and went uh, into the FBI, you know, from you know, to be an accountant at the FBI. And she's done, you know, uh, you know, a lot more than being an accountant. I think it's, you know, once you're in there, um, the, the roles are expanded. Uh, and, and you get to see a lot, but I don't know enough about exactly what happens in the FBI. And I think, you know, I wish you luck. I think it's pretty exciting. And uh, I hope that that, you know, that is an opportunity that uh, you enjoy. The second question, you mentioned having multiple internships at your time at Pace. As a college student currently applying to internships, the student is curious of how many internships you've had during your college career, how you acquired them and what skills they were looking for. Sure. So 
I had two sort of longer term internships um, during uh, during you know my my pace um, uh, my college days, and so um, one of them was at a company that um, doesn't I don't think it exists anymore. It was sort of an early stage tech company. The name of it was Prodigy. I don't know much about what happened um, to it. Uh, and then my second internship was at IBM in the tax department. Um, I think, you know, I'm not 100% sure um, what they were looking for, but if I had to sort of reflect back and guess, I think they were looking for someone who, you know, who had energy, showed interest, and, you know, that they could depend on. And so I, I know sort of, you know, and I, I have some, vivid, I, I've forgotten a lot in my life, but I have some vivid memories of my internships sitting next to, you know, folks that were, you know, graduated college early on in their career and them asking me to do things and talking to me and, and, and me, you know, just having the, the, you know, the opportunity to sort of like absorb, you know, what they were saying, what they were doing, like learn from, you know, more mature, older people. Um, and, and what I can, you know, reflecting on it, I can remember, you know, those folks really needed someone who was going to do some of the things, you know, maybe the things they didn't want to do, um, but the things that, you know, were new to me and interesting and exciting. And so, I think, you know, going on those um, interviews for those internships and maybe what I'll say is, you know, now sort of sitting in the position I'm in, what am I looking for um, in an intern, you know, that comes to interview here? And, you know, I think the, the primary thing that I'm looking for is, is that energy. Um, you know, it's not so much about the exact, you know, experience you've had before or, you know, it's, it's being able to come into the room and show that you're excited and that you, you know, you're going to work work hard and want to be part of the team and be a good be a good fit. And so, I think if you can demonstrate that, um, that you know, I think you'll resonate well with uh, the interviewers. Uh, what is your day like? What do you think your biggest strength is that carried you to what you are now, and how did it help you succeed? Sure. So uh, I don't really have a normal day. I think they're, they're all very different, but um, so maybe I'll say, you know, during the pandemic, um, my day is I start Zoom, you know, somewhere between 7.30 and 8.30 in the morning, and I end Zooming at, you know, 6.30, between 6.30 and 7.30. That is not the kind of day that I want to have, like, in perpetuity, just basically sitting non, you know, motionless, or except for my hands. I, I tend to talk a lot with my hands, but that's my only motion for the day. And that's been, you know, for the past, uh, you know, a year, that's been largely what it looks like. But what am I doing in those meetings? I'm talking to, you know, all different areas of the organization. You know, sometimes I'm solving problems or I'm not solving problems. I'm moderating the problem solving, you know, depending on, on uh, what's going on with my team, you know, and maybe more broadly. Sometimes I'm talking about, you know, the strategic direction of a particular team. Um, sometimes I'm looking at, you know, the financial results and trying to decide, you know, what is it that, you know, we need to do to meet our objectives. So there's a variety of things, but I think they're all kind of like within that overall framework. Um, um, I, you know, I'm not sure what my biggest, my biggest strength is. Maybe I would, if I had to, to say what I think sort of helped me, um, you know, achieve, uh, what I've achieved is one, I've worked, you know, I've worked very, very hard over the years. Um, and, you know, maybe that's sort of, that's primary and that's, you know, a work ethic that I learned from my parents, you know, that, you know, it's, it's and it's not all about, you know, putting time in, it's just about, you know, the amount of effort that I'm willing to put in. And I think that sort of has, you know, helped me um, move along in my career. Um, I, I'd say the other, the other thing that is, I think is super important. I mentioned it earlier, um, is, you know, is, is developing that judgment. And, and I spent a lot of time, you know, earlier on in my career and I even, I do it now still, um, you know, really observing and listening and making sure I'm present. So when, you know, when there was an issue going on, I might not have been adding anything to the conversation when I was, you know, a couple of years out of school, but I always wanted to try to get in the room and understand how, you know, the more senior people thought about it and how they, you know, how they approach things. And so I still, you know, do that today with, you know, my you know, other, other colleagues, you know, in the office and really just watch and observe and try, 
uh, you know, try not to, to be doing five things at the same time. I think I, I went to a meeting earlier today. So we had, we're, we're preparing for our board meetings, which are in June and they're going to be hybrid. So we're going to have, you know, some of the board members here and some of the board members on the screen. So I don't know if you guys have been participated in any of those meetings now that we're like, the Zoom is awesome. I can see, you know, I, I can see all of you, right? And we can talk. Um, we've done a few hybrid meetings where, you know, once the, there's people in the room and there's people on Zoom, the people are on Zoom become, you know, assuming most of the people in the room are leading the conversation are at a disadvantage. And because the people in the room become very, very tiny, you can't see their faces, you can't interact with them in the same way. Um, so we are, um, and I, I think I distracted myself there. So we're, we're setting up, uh, you know, like a hybrid, um, uh, you know, a hybrid Zoom meeting, uh, sort of a hybrid approach to our board meetings where um, we'll actually have individual cameras on the board members. And so even if you're, if you're on the Zoom, you'll be able to see the face of the people in the room. Okay, except mathematics skills, going into the accounting field, what other skills are needed and necessary in your position to succeed? So yeah, I think it, it comes, you know, it comes back to the hard work and, and the judgment. Um, I think now, and, and I'm curious, you know, I'd love to, to hear from, from you guys that, you know, there's, there's an element now of, right, accounting is very much tied into sort of technology and, and, you know, understanding how to sort of process large amounts of information in the most efficient way. And so I would say one of the skill sets that I don't have, because I, and I, I tried to do a pivot table over the weekend because I don't want to bother anybody. And I, I couldn't figure it out. Like I tried and I, I wasted about 45 minutes on it. I said, maybe I'm just, you know, maybe I need a class or, you know, it's not something I'm going to, um, I, I could create the pivot table. It didn't, it didn't have the information that I, that I wanted to sort it the way I wanted to sort it. So I think, you know, understanding sort of how to leverage, you know, like technology and, um, being able to think about, you know, the possibilities um, is another, you know, really important uh, skill that, you know, all of you probably have that, you know, I need to continue to work at. As a female leader, what has been the most significant barrier in your career? Barriers that you thought if you were a man, they wouldn't exist. Yeah, so, um, you know, that's a great question. And, you know, I guess what pops to mind um, with that question is, you know, maybe earlier on in my career, some of the struggles uh, that, that I had, and, and it really wasn't like that anything bad happened to me, um, but I, I did, you know, I, like I said, I always wanted to be in that room and be part of the conversations. And, you know, one of the sort of dynamics in the group that, you know, the group that I worked in, you know, probably earlier in my career in Goldman Sachs was that, you know, there, there, there were, there were mostly men in the group, um, and they were close to one another, and so they would go to lunch together, and they would, you know, and they were the leaders. Sorry, the, not my team members, and and so it wasn't um, a quite, you know, it wasn't that um, I couldn't succeed there, but I couldn't be part of the, you know, side conversations, and so I think that, you know, was something that um, I need just needed to, you know, figure out how to navigate um, and. And pr probably, you know, one of the bigger challenges, just, you know, having enough of the common interests that, um, you know, because relationships are a super important part of, of success, because, you know, you do learn things from others, even if they're not, you know, directly related to, to what you're doing. And I think, you know, being able to develop those, uh, you know, is, is critical to, to sort of, you know, moving forward in the organization. So I say that's the hardest, that was the biggest hurdle. Uh, that, I, that I faced. I think maybe time for one more question, Ileana, I think, from the time. Uh, okay. Could you please expand on accounting for ESG? It seems like it's a growing field, so I'm curious about your thoughts and recommendations to learn more about it and to be ready for when it becomes a more significant part of accounting and finance. Yeah, no, and that's a great question, and, and it's... Um, it's pretty interesting. So we, we've been on an ESG journey here at NASDAQ for a while, just use this as an example. Um, and, you know, we started the journey, we have a, a sustainability uh, you know, officer or a lead, uh, a lead of sustainability, who's awesome and can think about, you know, the framework we're operating in and, and what are the things that are going to be impactful for us to do. Um, and, and that's, you know, 
wh where we started. And then all, you know, as time went on, what, what was required is that, you know, different, um, uh, different agencies and, and there are different requirements for different you know, bits of information and maybe not required, but maybe there's questionnaires that you can fill out because you're trying to, to tell your ESG story as a company. You want, you know, you've got your sustainability report and then you've got these you know, agencies, these rating agencies that are scraping for data and, and giving you a rating on ESG. And so you want to get your data out. What, what happened over time as those things grew, you know, we, we had, you know, someone who wasn't part of the financial infrastructure, a, amazing sustainability person that was gathering information from all over the organization and putting it into reports. And so it sounds an awful lot like the skill set of, you know, doing an SEC report and doing your 10Q and 10K, but just for ESG. And so we... Um, we, we worked within that framework for a while. And now, you know, we, we sort of reflected on it coming into this year and said, you know, we need to make this look more like, you know, the reporting functions that we have in the accounting world. And what we've done is, you know, is create that structure within the accounting world, just like we have the SEC reporting team. And so I think, you know, I don't know what it looks like at all other companies, but I imagine that that's the direction that we're moving, we're moving in. And, and, it's not, it's not as if you're making you know, necessarily debits and credits um, within the ESG space, but I think the skill set you have you know, as an accountant um, or you know, in the finance function is understanding how to put you know, data and information together to tell a story. And so I think you know, as we, you know, at least for sure for, for within uh, NASDAQ, you know, as we move forward, it's going to become a bigger and bigger group as that is the focus on ESG becomes you know, more and more um, over time and, and the, the reportable frameworks change. I think the, you know, the folks on my team are the best you know, positioned within, within the company to do that and to really help the company tell the story, help us tell, help us tell our story in the most powerful way. Look, unfortunately, we run out of time. Um, I want to thank Ann Dennison for being with us today and thank all the students for taking time to, to join her uh, and the rest of us. Um, we have a small token of our appreciation for you participating today. Unfortunately, I can't hand it to you over Zoom, so it'll be on its way to you in the mail shortly. But thank you very much for being with us this afternoon. Um, and I look forward to staying in touch with you. Um, she's also joined the Lubin Advisory Board, so we'll have an opportunity to work with her closely going forward in Lubin. Um, so have a, have a great rest of your day, everybody. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks for great questions. I really thank enjoyed you. it. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.